As we continue to accelerate in 2024, the Bitcoin digital asset market just keeps moving on. And even some of the most bearish news that you could think of really has no bearance on the market itself. So what I'm talking about is today, there was a little piece that came out that India is the block URLs of Kraken, Binance, and several other crypto firms. Now, if this would have happened in the bear market in 2022, it would have obliterated the market and shot us down even farther than what we were. However, it is right now. And right now that the market is uh, alive and running just fine, Bitcoin's only down by 0.7 or 8%. The total market cap is around 1.74 trillion. So this doesn't really have too much of, a, of an impact on the market itself. And after this, we're gonna take a look at some super bullish news. So this is the article itself. The move will block Binance, Kraken, Huobi, KuCoin, Bittrex, Gate, Bitstamp, Bitfinex, and Mexi Global after claiming that the virtual asset service providers or VASP, which is the license that they all have to have to operate, were operating illegally because they were not complying with the Prevention of Money Laundering Act, KYC and AML, which is essentially what they got CZ Binance for as far as money laundering. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and say that he was found guilty. I'm just saying that's what the government charged him with. Prime Minister Moody, Modi expressed in August the need for global crypto regulation. All right. The rules, regulations, and framework around it should not belong to one country or a group of countries. Not only crypto, but all emerging tech need a global framework and regulations. When I read that, I'm like, this seems reasonable. I think India looks to be that uh, they don't hate crypto as much as possible. But then I read the next sentence. The country has a whopping 30% tax on crypto gains. It's a higher tax rate on equities or any other investments in India. Look, in America, we have short-term capital gains that could be between 25 and 45%, also an additional 7 to 9% depending on the state that you're actually in. Long-term capital gains could be 20, 21% depending. So when I take a look at 30%, I'm like, honestly, that's not too bad. But of course, in India, they look at this and go, well, that's that's kind of a bummer. So I was thinking maybe they don't really invest too much in crypto, but not so fast. So the last one says it all. Chain analysis found that India leads the world in grassroots crypto adoption. Earlier this year, the country is the second largest crypto market by raw estimated transaction volume. What that says to me is that there are some outsized gains and everybody can see it, even a country with a billion plus people and say, you know what? We can get into equities, we can get into real estate, we can get into other commodities, but probably crypto is our best bet, even if we got to get hosed on the 30% tax rate. Let me know anything about that in the comments section. But again, didn't move the market too much. And then we got some of this news. Bitcoin, worth a billion dollars, vanishes from exchange in the largest single day outflow in 12 months. When I read this, I'm like, this is super bullish. But I got to warn you, on-chain data, you got to really dig deep. This was all pretty much came about from Glassnode and the chart itself. And it says that, yeah, there was a big, massive outflow in one day. And it states on Wednesday, just over 28,000 Bitcoin worth one point, roughly 1.2 billion left centralized exchanges. And when Bitcoin goes off the exchanges, that means people don't want to sell it. They put it in cold storage and hold on to it. When they put it on the exchanges, that means they want to sell. So obviously people are looking to hold it for a little bit longer. And this, they say, is the largest single day outflow in Bitcoin since December 14th, 2022. And I was looking at this chart, I'm like, I don't think that's true because I can't see behind this and I don't really know what's going on. So I took a look at CryptoQuant just to make sure. And I took a look at the total exchange outflows. Again, this is the 29th. He had 24,000. So not the 28,000, but whatever. Over here, he had 28,000. So maybe this is what they're talking about, December 27th. But then I thought to myself, wait a second, the day before that, he had 51,000 and then he had 37,000. And then let's just blow this out to a month. Hey, wait, there's more dates. This is totally wrong. I took a look at a year. I'm like, hey, wait a second. There's a ton of different days which had 28,000 or more Bitcoin outflows itself. But then I took a look at the actual chart itself and I go, wait, 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 that's NetFlow. So that was on my fault. And then I took a look at net flow. So net flow is the amount and they take the total output and total output is a net positive or net negative. And we can see that, yes, on this day, December 26, they've got 22,000. So a little bit off, but okay, I'll take it for a week or so. Let's blow this out to a month. All right. So pretty bullish indicator. There's a lot of Bitcoin coming off the exchanges, but I went to a year. I'm like, wait a second. There's a lot of net outflows. Over here, you had... 26, 27,000, then you got 22, 24 over here, and so on and so forth. So I'm like, eh, the article's a little bit off, but not too bad. So again, 
when you're doing this, this on-chain data analysis, just take it with a grain of salt. It may be a year. It is bullish and that's fantastic, but you just got to kind of dig into it to really get the full picture. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments section. And speaking of exchanges, for all these things we just talked about, and of course, we talked about India, now these, these outflows, which I, is again, very bullish. This is extremely bullish. Even after the problems with legally, Binance grew their base by 30%. They added 40 million accounts to 170 million. So even all the things that happened with CZ Binance and having to go to court in uh, Seattle, I believe, correct me in the comment section, in the US, they still added 40 million accounts. So even something like this doesn't really bother people too much, even though it just happened a little bit ago. I think 2024 is gonna be a fantastic year. I will say this though, when we were taking a look at this article itself and it talked about they want to get uh, KYC and AML, I know people were probably thinking to themselves, but Rob, because of this article, wouldn't you just use a DEX? Well, you could use a DEX, but how are you gonna do an on and off ramp for all your fiat? Good question, right? Because right now you gotta use a centralized exchange. For me, I'm stuck with Coinbase in the United States. But what if you use a wallet where it could be your own on and off ramp? Well, I've got this wallet I've been using. It's called Titus. I use two different wallets and Titus is one of them. I also use Phantom. I also use cold storage device, uh, Tangem, uh, Ledgers and stuff like this. But this is my hot wallets that I use. I use Titus and I use Phantom. What I like about Titus itself, it uses Ethereum, Solana, Bitcoin, Polygon, Cosmos, and Optimism. And I've been doing some really easy swaps moving in and out. I was talking to one of the guys over there last night. They go, yeah, we're gonna be rolling out an on and off ramp, potentially in Q1 2024 with governance. And I'm like, hmm, sounds pretty interesting. Then I asked them about, you know, I've done this with Ledger for buying and selling cryptos and stuff like that. And they use MoonPay and it's ridiculous. It's four to four to five percent or something crazy like that. Like, no, no, no. We're gonna use fractions of a percentage. So I'm gonna leave this in the description. I'd like you to try this out and check it for the wallet itself. This is the ones that I use. And uh, maybe as they roll those things out and a couple other things, I think it could be a big thing. And then speaking of, because I always kind of saw Titus and Phantom as a Solana wall, even though it's not. Let's talk about Solana. Solana, speaking of good news, they just, somebody sent a boatload of Solana to Coinbase yesterday. This is this uh, could be the big dump that we were, were that we were afraid of. But on a side note, the transaction fee was ridiculously small. Check this out. It transferred from here to here to Coinbase 2. They transferred uh, 1.8 million Solana. So you're looking at you know millions of dollars worth of Solana was actually moved out. But if you can see here the fee, <laughs> 0.000007. Try doing that in the bank. It's not going to happen. And I was and people were saying, well, this is the dump they were waiting for. And did it? No. Didn't really matter. Uh, Solana is actually up uh, almost 6% for the 24 hour period. So again, some of the things that would be considered bearish really doesn't have a big of a hindrance on what's happening. And then, but there is one thing that people have been harping on lately, the tokenomics. There's a great website, sent to me by Dave. Solana tokenomics, and I wanna share this with you, there's links in the description. I want you to analyze it. Did you know that the, that the circulating supply the total supply right now is 565 million. Circulating is 429, non-circulating is 136. What's the difference? The non-circulating supply takes two forms. Sold that is locked in a stake account. This is the, this is the result of an investment in Solana or a grant by the foundation. And the next one is, is Solana that is owned by Solana Labs, the Solana Foundation. So that's the two different ones. People were surmising like, well, the Solana Foundation can just dump on us. Listen, anybody can dump on you. So just be, be aware of that. But here's the big thing, the stake supply. You see the total Sol Solana stake? 388 million, locked Solana stake, when we were talking about 54 million, and this one, Alameda's locked stake, 24 million, 391,735. Who's, who's Alameda? Well, that's the investment arm of FTX. And right now they are going through a bankruptcy. So if that comes through, then yes, they could unlock it and they could sell it all. But again, I'll just remind you, goes all the way and they sell everything, which first they have to get out of bankruptcy. Good luck, it could actually happen. Heck. Mount Gox just came out of bankruptcy after after 10 years and they just gave the initial distribution. That's after a decade. However, there's a great video from Aaron Bennett and he talks about Celsius and you are actually eligible as they agree to the plan. And that took about a year or so. So it could actually happen, but is everybody gonna sell? Not for sure, but that's just what it actually is. I'm gonna have you take a look at this and you make the judge for you because you are 
doing your own research. Anyhow, let me think about that. And then lastly, airdrops. There's a great video by Lady of Crypto. She does a great, fantastic job about airdrops. I'll link that in the description. And what she was talking a lot about was uh, Linnea, which is uh, the blockchain for MetaMask. And what they're using, and when I took a look at this, Linnea, the airdrop's already pretty much over. So you just missed it by like five days. Sorry, Charlie. Ah, don't worry, I missed it too. But what they are using is this third party called Galax. And Galax has a lot of different things that you can look at for the next airdrops. And all you got to do is like answer a few questions. You got to use some on-chain transactions. It's really not too difficult. Also, there's another one called Intract. And Intract, there's another one that's coming up. Uh, this is for base. And I'm trying, I'm going through that process right now. And you're doing little things like swapping Ethereum, uh, going into base and uh, doing transactions. Not very difficult. And I will just leave website itself in the description. But right now they're going through base, ZK Sync, Alio, Maker DAO, and then over under here for trending campaigns, layer Z and a bunch of different things, and then token quest. So if you were like really looking for the next big airdrop, it's probably gonna be on Galax or Intract. And I'll link this again, you can find it. But just remember, when you're doing this type of airdrop thing, make sure that you're using a hot wallet that doesn't have your entire life savings in it. Make it a whole new hot wallet that you just do that stuff in so you don't lose anything because I gotta tell you, this could be a little risky. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. There are so many things going on right now. Just sign up and subscribe to somebody you trust and wanna get some information from because it's going to keep moving faster. That's it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate you and I'll see you on the next one.